After meeting at a camp, a group of teenagers are given the mission of saving the world from an alien invasion that could mean the end of planet Earth. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2019 movie, Rim of the World. Somewhere in space, Major Collins struggles to understand her supervisor's orders, while the space station she is on begins to be consumed by destruction. On the television set, General Cowrie orders the woman to leave immediately. However, the lights suddenly go out and a creature emits a terrifying scream, leaving the Major desperate. On the other hand, on Earth, a boy called Alex is watching NASA's new thruster test being broadcast on several television sets. The nerd is interrupted by his mother, who begs him to leave the room. At the same time, Darius is a wealthy young man who says goodbye to his parents and his life of luxury to go on a trip. In contrast, Jen Jen is a girl who is about to board a plane to the United States alone. To fool the security guard, she pays some guy to pretend to be her uncle. After getting off the plane, in the cab, the girl tells the driver that she is going to a campsite called, Rim of the World. In Los Angeles, Alex is preparing to arrive at his destination and is startled when an ambulance passes quickly by his car. Soon after, he arrives at the, Rim of the World's, camp, where he is greeted by the monitor Logan, who teaches him a cool handshake. In addition, the nerd is introduced to Conrado, who jokingly shows off his defined chest. He then meets Jen Jen and tries to talk to her, speaking her language, but the girl doesn't even listen to him. Darius is also at the camp, waiting in line, when he is surprised by a pretty girl who asks him to put his cell phone in the box. The boy is flustered by her beauty, but still manages to lie, saying that he left his cell phone at home, even though it's in his pocket. Meanwhile, Alex is forced to sing a farewell song with his mother, which embarrasses him because all the other children are watching. Later, the nerd decides to go ziplining, even though he's terrified of heights. At the top of the platform, Darius tries to talk to Jen Jen, but she doesn't care about him. After climbing the ladder, Alex goes to the edge of the platform, where he realizes how high he is and panics. The instructor tries to calm him down, but the boy gives up and is embarrassed by the judgmental looks on people's faces. Soon after, the nerd hears the news on a television that NASA has lost contact with the space station, and anything could have happened to the astronauts up there. The next day, everyone is getting ready for a trip to the lake. Darius gets into the adult's car, but is soon kicked out by the driver. He then goes to the other car and tries to push Alex to get more space. When Logan finally arrives, he admits that his license is suspended, scaring all the passengers. After that, they reach the river, where they discover that the canoe they intended to use is full of waste. Then Jen Jen goes into the forest and Alex follows her, even though he's scared. After a few seconds, the boy realizes that he is already far away from the other children. The girl arrives at a cliff where she can see the landscape printed on the advertisement for the campsite, which dazzles her. At the same time, Darius emerges from the bushes and drags the nerd to the edge of a cliff, trying to help him face his fear of heights. However, the poor boy becomes desperate and starts screaming. Suddenly, a teenager called Gabriel appears on the scene and demands that the bully let the other boy go, so the boy is thrown to the ground. The rich young man then goes up against the newcomer in a fighting pose, trying to land at least one blow, but ends up receiving a straight punch to the face that knocks him to the ground. Soon after, Alex's hero helps him get back on his feet and confesses that he lives nearby. After the sound of several explosions appears on the scene, Darius takes out his cell phone and discovers that a state of emergency has been declared, warning civilians to leave metropolitan areas and not to approach an unknown ship. They decide to look for the other children, but when they get to the lake, they realize that everyone has gone. At the same time, more explosions and aircraft appear in the sky and all cell phones stop working. What's more, the forest can contain a number of dangerous animals, such as the black bear, from which they wouldn't be able to protect themselves. After walking for some time, the young people manage to return to the camp, which is empty. There is only a note indicating that everyone else has gone down the mountain. However, Conrad is still there, but unconscious. Jen Jen finds the man's drinking canteen and drinks everything in it in one gulp. When they enter one of the camp's facilities, they discover that there is no trace of energy. Alex explains that there may have been a nuclear explosion in the atmosphere, which causes all electronic devices and even motor vehicles to stop working. Suddenly, another explosion occurs outside and everyone rushes to check it out, then they spot a state-of-the-art F-22 Raptor fighter flying overhead. Suddenly, several aircraft arrive on the scene firing at each other, hitting everything in their path. One of the shots passes very close to the kids, who are thrown away by the impact. Then, an unknown ship gets closer and closer to them and lands on the ground, causing everyone to fall again. At the same moment, Gabriel tries to touch the space capsule and ends up burning his hand, as the metal is still hot after passing through the atmosphere. Faced with this situation, 
The rookie steals a bottle of water from Darius and pours it on the door of the capsule. At that moment, the rich kid goes to the front of the aircraft to prevent it from being opened. However, the door is ripped off the capsule by an impulse, throwing the young man away. Soon afterwards, Major Collins appears from inside the aircraft. She needs to go to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in order to deliver a key to Dr. Fielding, but she is too injured to do so and hands the mission over to the youngsters. A few seconds later, a bizarre creature with several arms appears behind the capsule and heads towards the kids. They are forced to leave in a hurry, without being able to prevent the astronaut from being viciously attacked by the alien. Looking back, Alex realizes that a second dog-like alien has emerged from inside the giant, as if it were a puppy. The youngsters manage to get inside the camphouse, but the monster continues to chase them. While they are hiding in the kitchen, a creature silently approaches. Again, they try to escape, but this time, Alex is about to be discovered by the alien. However, Darius ends up knocking over some cutlery, making a noise and attracting the attention of the enemy, who chases the boy frantically between the pipes of the kitchen equipment. No obstacle can stop the monster, which approaches and traps the youngsters against the wall. It then advances towards them, but the children duck just in time, causing it to fall into some kind of pantry. Soon afterwards, the other giant alien also finds the place, which makes the children run outside the house. Even so, the creature uses its huge claws to break through the wall in a powerful blow that narrowly misses Alex. In the backyard, Gabriel and Darius hide under a ladder, but are surprised when they realize that the alien is walking right above them. In a nearby toilet, Alex and Jen Jen end up making noise and attract the monster towards them. The girl quickly comes up with the idea of hiding inside the sewer, even though it's full of dirt. The other pair come out of hiding and realize that the bizarre dog is moving around inside the house's pipes, about to find them. At the same time, in the bathroom, the children come across Conrad doing his business on top of them. Unaware of the imminent danger, the man receives a ferocious attack from the thirsty alien. Gabriel and his partner run towards the capsule as the creature approaches faster and faster. Fortunately, they manage to close the door, keeping the danger outside. Suddenly, Alex and Jen Jen appear outside the aircraft, asking them to open the door, unaware that the monster is behind them. The pair run off around the capsule. However, the dog manages to find them and jumps towards them, only to be fired at by some kind of laser beam, launched by the youngsters inside the space object. However, the other alien appears once again behind them and pins them to the ground. The monster releases a black goo into Darius's mouth, but fortunately, a military fighter appears and shoots the animal. Everyone manages to get up and run, except for the rich kid who loses control and starts insulting everyone else. Witnessing the scene, Jen Jen interrupts the argument by slapping them, and speaks for the first time in a motivational speech. While analyzing their next steps, the group discovers that NASA's laboratory is in Pasadena, a city about 112 kilometers from the forest. Faced with the long distance, they decide to go to a police station and pass the mission on to the police. After everyone has picked up their bikes, Alex confesses that he won't be able to keep up with them as he never learned to ride a bike. However, the youngsters don't want to leave him behind, so they go to the highway to teach him. Darius and Jen Jen walk alongside the nerd holding him until he manages to pedal on his own. Suddenly, the boy gets distracted and ends up falling by the side of the road. What's worse, they see the city in complete destruction. Meanwhile, the giant alien gets up, even though he's badly injured, and realizes that his baby has been defeated. When the children arrive at the police station, Gabriel offers to store the bikes outside. Inside the site, Darius finds a note saying that the launch of nuclear weapons in Los Angeles has been authorized, and that Europe and Asia have already been destroyed. Now the authorities are trying to locate the source of the extraterrestrial energy. At the same time, the nerd enters the police station and finds a prisoner in the cell, a man called Lou, who asks the young people to let him go. The group begins to vote on what to do with the bandit, with Alex casting the deciding vote. The boy decides to release the individual, asking him to leave only after the children have left the place. While cycling down the street, the young people are surprised by several military vehicles. Suddenly, soldiers appear pointing guns at them. The commander claims that the place isn't safe, but Alex gives the key to the guy, who admits to having received messages in Morse code from Dr. Fielding. They then get on a bus to evacuate the area. However, the city begins to be attacked by several shots, which hit the vehicle squarely. After leaving the crashed bus, the young people realize that there are several spaceships in the sky shooting at each other. In addition, alien dogs are running around the surface of the Earth attacking everyone. Further on, the group comes across the captain of the soldiers trapped in the rubble. He claims he won't make it out alive and gives the key back to the youngsters. At the same moment, the area is the target of even more powerful shots, which cause an explosion, 
but the children manage to escape in time. Discussing the next step, the young people come to the conclusion that they need to find something to eat and rest before walking 60 kilometers to reach the laboratory. Gabriel claims that his house is nearby, but that it hasn't been his home for a long time. He reveals the whole truth to the others. That he was in the forest because he had been arrested, and even if he finds his mother, she won't want to see him. Later, they eat at the house of the young inmate, who reveals that he was arrested because he gave the wrong change to a customer while he was working, so the man accused him of theft, which made him freak out and attack the guy. Before going to bed, the group gets ready for the night and Alex is forced to share a bed with the girl, which makes her very happy. During the night, they are awakened from their sleep by a strange noise outside. They all prepare to leave the place by stealth. They walk among the sheets hanging in the yard, but don't realize that armed men wearing bizarre masks are watching them. One of the guys removes his mask, revealing the face of Lou, the man they freed from his cell at the police station. At the same moment, the kids are grateful to find someone they know. Luckily, the masked man says he doesn't intend to hurt the youngsters, but they have to hand over the key to the laboratory, as it could be worth a lot of money. Alex claims he won't give him anything, so Lou takes a knife out of his pocket and threatens to cut him. Suddenly, one of the aliens appears and viciously attacks the people, quickly destroying them. The boys try to get through the gate, but Gabriel stays behind. He asks Jen Jen to throw the light stick, which he uses to draw the monster's attention towards the pool. At the same moment, the tarpaulin can't support the giant's weight, causing it to sink into the water. After defeating the alien last night, the group of friends are getting closer and closer to the laboratory, but they get into an endless argument because Dariush blames Alex for breaking the villain out of jail. Gabriel gets involved in the fight, and the two roll around on the ground. After Jen Jen separates the combatants, the young men make up. At the same time, in another place, the previously defeated animal rises once again, ready to hunt. In a shopping mall in the city, the girl confesses to Alex that she traveled to the USA because her father didn't want her as a daughter, and shows that she was happy to have met her new friends. After leaving the establishment, they come across a Ford Mustang Mach 1 from 1973. The electromagnetic pulse doesn't affect old cars, which drives the boys crazy. Jen Jen hits the gas and leaves the parking lot, making the car's tires squeal. During the journey, they are surprised by the bizarre creature that suddenly appears on top of the vehicle. The monster manages to get its claws inside the car, but the driver aims the steering wheel in the direction of a bus stop, causing the creature to fall. While the young people are celebrating their victory, the alien returns once again. At this point, Jen Jen has the idea for everyone to jump out of the moving car. Shortly afterwards, the car falls off the viaduct and the alien is crushed by the impact. However, Alex confesses that the key is not with him, and that it may have been in the car. Faced with this situation, Dariush decides to take his chances by going down to where the vehicle is, even though he knows that the monster may still be alive. As he approaches the car, the young man notices that the creature is still breathing. So he sneaks into the car, trying to find the key. While searching all the compartments of the vehicle, Dariush ends up activating the stereo, but the key also falls into his hands. When he gets out of the car, he doesn't notice the animal starting to get up, even though his friends try to warn him. He then receives a massive jump scare, which causes him to almost faint. The boy drags himself back into the car, but soon manages to escape to his companions. After walking a few more kilometers, the youngsters come across the NASA laboratory. Inside, they realize that everything is in ruins, so they run to find Dr. Fielding. However, they find the man already lifeless. So the group decides to split up and each look for their family. Before leaving the place, Alex realizes that Jen Jen has nowhere to go, so all the others are moved and return to the same place they said goodbye to earlier. Suddenly, the youngsters hear a voice coming from somewhere, and come across General Cowrie on a video call, asking about the situation of the scientists. On discovering that they have all been destroyed, the man tells them that the children will not be able to do anything with the key, and that they must leave the place immediately. However, the nerd insists on doing something to stop the aliens. So Kauri orders one of them to go down to the basement and turn on the emergency generators. Jen Jen decides to accept the mission, so Alex gives her a watch as a present and receives a kiss as a thank you. In addition, the boys need to activate an X-ray laser, which they will use to defeat the invading beings. The key contains the coordinates of the alien mothership, which is orbiting the Earth. However, before they can do anything, they need to realign the satellite on the roof and find a computer to look up the coordinates. Alex decides to go up to the roof to solve the satellite's problem, even though he's terrified of heights. Meanwhile, the alien who was hit by the car manages to escape from the wreckage. Even though half of his body was trapped under the wreckage, he regenerates easily. In the basement of the laboratory, Jen Jen manages to get out of the pipes and is startled to find a woman unconscious. 
Alex is also faced with a challenge, as he realizes that the tower he has to climb is taller than he imagined. The girl finds the circuit breakers and turns them on in the sequence the commander had explained. After that, Gabriel checks the computers and inserts the key. Now, they must wait for the satellite to align so that they can activate the weapon. However, the abominable creature appears on the roof and starts climbing the tower, chasing Alex. He quickly adjusts the satellite and, when he reaches the top of the tower, the boy grabs hold of a cable and slides down as if he were on a zipline, managing to escape from the monster behind him. In the basement, Jen Jen opens the wrong door and ends up releasing an alien dog that was trapped. The animal viciously attacks an injured woman on the floor, while the girl tries to leave the place in silence. However, Gabriel reports on the radio that Dariush has started to feel ill, which makes the monster realize the presence of Jen Jen, who rushes into a vault on the premises and slams the door shut with all her might, tearing off the creature's paw that was about to reach it. In the control room, the boys receive the code from General Kauri, but Gabriel can't remember the sequence and puts in the wrong numbers several times. Luckily, Dariush regains consciousness momentarily and writes down the numbers for him. Even so, it takes two people to activate the devices to start the computer, and Gabriel realizes that his partner has fainted once again. However, Jen Jen manages to arrive on the scene and the two prepare to start programming, but are interrupted by the giant alien. As they scream in their corner, Alex appears and draws the attention of the monster, which runs towards him. Faced with this, the other kids rush to start the weapon, causing the satellites to line up. The boys celebrate, but they need to get out of the place as quickly as possible. At the same time, the nerd enters a dangerous room containing flammable substances. He turns on one of the devices, waiting for the creature to enter the place and, when the animal approaches, the boy uses a flare to hit one of the machines, causing an explosion that hits his enemy hard. As the flames surround the room, Alex begins to remember an accident from his past. Even so, he manages to find the courage to go through the fire and get out of the room. Outside the laboratory, the group of friends mourn the loss of their companion as they watch the building collapse in ashes. Suddenly, the nerd emerges from inside the building and everyone rushes to embrace him. In the sky, an explosion erupts as the alien ship is completely destroyed. Afterwards, Alex receives a kiss from Jen Jen, and everyone celebrates his victory in saving the world. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.